Hello YouTube friends, Ben Ochart here. Thank you so much for tuning in. And this video is a follow-up on the cichlid aggression experiment that I talked about in a prior video. I'll include a link at the top of this video. And a couple interesting outcomes, and one of them is that after removing the three most aggressive fish from this tank, I expected, as is usually the case in a cichlid tank, that another fish would very quickly move into a dominant position and perhaps start harassing the other fish. That didn't occur. Instead, what I've been experiencing here is a pretty, a pretty peaceful tank. And um, before telling you more about that, let me just share with you that in the 55 gallon, What's left now is the uh, is the phoenix, who will stay in here until his eye is entirely cl cleared up. He still has that foggy eye on the right side. You can see it there. And also the, um, the Eureka Red, which usually is hiding around the top of the tank here somewhere. The Eureka Red is in here, and uh, he's healing up quite nicely from the unfortunate beating he took from the dragon blood. The dragon blood is, uh, has been taken, the dragon blood has been taken to uh, the aquatic critter and I'll put a link to that video and you can see my trip there. Let's see where it is. There he is. Way at the top behind the filter is the uh, Eureka Red hiding. But he does come out and eat, and he is somewhat active, and his fins have healed up. And the, uh, and the Phoenix doesn't really seem that interested in him. The fish that was interested in him was the, uh, was the living Stonii. And what I had to do was remove him from the 55 and put him back in here in the 210. And it was really just sort of an experiment to see if he'd be able to adapt and come back into the, uh, into society, if you will, into the general population. And at first, he was chasing the, uh, here he is right here. At first he was chasing the OB quite a bit. For some reason I had an interest in the OB and he would chase him but not really hit him. Just sort of just sort of get next to him and follow him around and I wasn't sure what he was doing. But after about an hour or so that calmed down and now he seems to have lost his obsession with the OB and you notice that he's not entirely entirely blue he has some spots so he has some some he's not entirely in breeding dress there's the OB and if you notice the OB's fins he's not torn up so it's not like he was being pursued and and beaten up it was really odd he was just following him around and just relentless and just following him around which was funny because before I took him out, the OB was one of the only fish that could hang out with him on the right side of the tank. But now, it looks like the, uh, to my surprise, because they're usually pretty peaceful, the autopharynx tetrastigma is asserting himself and being somewhat dominant in the tank. But he's not a very aggressive tank boss or dominant fish, so overall, the tank is doing fine. Now one of the ways you, you really can gauge the amount of aggression in an African cichlid tank is you look at the fins. Look at the tail fins in particular and also look at the sides of the fish. See if there's any marks where another fish has hit them. And look at the tail. So in inspecting all of the tails and I think one of the working titles for this video was the uh, tale tells the tale. 
maybe that's a little cheesy, but I mean, even on this, look at this tail here, beautiful tail. And uh, I'm not seeing damage on, on anyone's tail, and that tells me that the overall aggression in this tank has really, really diminished. So the tail there on the tangerine tiger. Beautiful. On the uh, Lethronops oculatus. Again, another beautiful example of a cichlid tail and it's in perfect shape. Usually the tail, the tail and the dorsal will show damage from being hit from behind and above and also you'll see damage on the sides and sometimes you'll see damage in the lips if they're getting into lip locking with each other. But I'm not seeing any of that here. Certainly not with the Energizer Bunny, which is the uh, Buchachromus Nodotania, who just simply goes back and forth endlessly. So, the trout. What a tail on that guy, huh? So at any rate, I would say that overall, it was a very good thing that I removed the apex, the most aggressive, and, uh, and now I have a, a group of fish that seem, seem to actually be getting along. Now, you know that can change with African cichlids, but for now, there's actually peace in this tank even with one of the apex, with one of the extra aggressive fish, the living stone eye, even with the living stone eye returned to the tank. I'm not seeing a lot of aggression. So, fingers crossed for now, there is peace in a cichlid tank, a very rare situation. And uh, I'm gonna enjoy it. Sit here and watch them and enjoy these beautiful fish. And I'm not really entirely sure what I'm gonna do with um, these fish here, uh, both the Eureka Red and the, and the Phoenix. I'm gonna heal up that Phoenix. He's a beautiful fish, you can see him. He's a, just a gorgeous fish from the Cichlid Shack. So I'll get him healed up and uh, I'll do what I can for that Eureka Red who's hiding. He was just out eating just a minute ago. He's up there hiding in the bubbles. But, um, so anyway, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with those two fish. I don't think I'm gonna introduce them back to the 210. They're just gonna create too much trouble. So, I'll either have to have a separate tank dedicated to him or just go ahead and take him over to the aquatic critter as well. Or if you're close to me here in Nashville, drop me a line, maybe you can adopt him. Okay. So uh, that's the update. Other tanks are doing great. Tapa host, redhead Tapa host there. Red spotted gold severum. I love the way the geos are constantly sifting the sand. It's a chocolate cichlid. Sometimes he looks very chocolate. Sometimes a little less chocolate. There's two of them in there. Let me show you one other thing that's pretty cool. Yeah, those electric blue, the, the um, you get the electric blue color on, on both of them, absolutely beautiful. And my little, uh, my little green tears, all three of them are doing well. And over here in the 90, take a look at this uh, Nicaragua. The kind of colors that are starting to pop on the Nicaragua are absolutely gorgeous. Some blue in the face, some red and orange in the fins and the sides. I understand this is a female, that the females are the ones who get the color in the Nicaragua cichlids. And the male is rather plain. You can see him up here working, working the plants. Maybe he'll get a little color when he gets older. 
There's Tom, the Jack Dempsey. Beautiful fish, love that fish. Every time you look at him, he's a different color. Sometimes very light, sometimes very dark blue, dark, sometimes all black. Severums are getting along. Here's the red shoulder, a young red shoulder. These fish get very big. And I have a green in the, in the back there. I'm not sure if you can make them out. Big green severum. Here he comes. And of course I have some Surrey Menensis. More geos in this tank. Again, I just love geos. I might be going off to the aquatic critter and picking up one of those juraparis, a juripari. Let me know if you think that fish would get along with my combination of fish. Okay, so that's it for now, my friends. Thank you so much for tuning in. You are appreciated. Be sure to join me on Saturday for the Cichlids and Coffee live stream. We'll talk about all kinds of things, South American, African cichlids, filtration, substrate, lighting, decor, and whatever questions you have. My favorite part, of course, of the live stream is the Q&A, the questions that you ask. All right, that's it. Bye-bye. Thank you.